What's up guys, Nepenthes here and welcome back to another video on So Rare. Today guys, I'm going to run you through some club changes, the two purchases that I've made. Um, I think I showed you Rio Hatate before, you can see the other two on the screen now. Um, my lineups, specifically my Rare lineups and one of the plans that I've got um, this week as well. And um, I do want to show you guys um, my So Rare data so that you can see um, what we've got going on, basically. Now, I am trying to get rid of, like, my my inventory of, like, poor players, right? i got a lot of them. They don't mean anything to me. So we are trying to get rid of those. Um, but, of course, guys, uh, just to note, everything mentioned here is absolutely categorically not financial advice. I do urge you guys to do your own research when it comes to So Rare and anything in general. But specifically with So Rare... Make sure you know what you're doing, what you're getting involved in before you just decide to get involved with it as there is money on the line. However, if you do want to sign up with So Rare, use the link in the pinned comment or in the description below. And once you've purchased five cards from the primary market, which is this one here, the new card auctions market, you will get a free limited card. From my experience, those limited cards are generally worthless. But going through my inventory right now, actually, and selling off some cards, I've got a couple there that have uh, come very good and are worth like 60 or 70 pounds. So it's not been all bad. But of course, I've got a lot of referral rewards, whereas you're only going to get the one um, the one card. So who did I buy and why did I buy them? I bought Philip Cohn and I bought Faiz Selimani. Um, I was on the stream today going through everything uh, and basically... I'll tell you what, I'll take you through my lineups for the game week and then I'll take you through why I bought who I bought. Uh, and again, I'm only going to show the rare lineups today because the limiteds I'm not content on. I don't like my limited teams. They're a bit wishy-washy. They're like, if players have really good weeks, I'll be lucky to get a tier three, maybe tier two rewards. But in general, I'm going to be falling just short. And that sort of stuff doesn't really interest me at the moment. So to go through what we've got, I have now got a Challenger Europe set up which is why I went and bought Philip Cohn and uh, Faiz Selimani. And that, um, that SO5 is going to be Cohn, who we just purchased. Uh, Jan Bamert, who, of course, was a reward for us. He was our first ever rare reward. He was an under 23s. And his price chart right now is just going through the roof. He's now worth almost £300. Whereas when I got him for the reward, he was worth uh, around £100. And that is because not only is he playing... But he's playing well and he's playing regularly. So uh, very, very happy with that. He's only got six months left of under 23 utility on him. However, that's where we're at. We've also got Reynolds. Now, I bought Reynolds for a really good price. Uh, of course, he's now moved to Korchik, um, which is really, really nice. I bought him... Uh, let me go and get my rares up on the screen here. I bought him for £282. His three-day average is £320, but his floor price is £471. So either way, there's some good profit to be made on him. And I'm hoping he'll play uh, kind of well. And th the reason why I kind of cemented myself on Faiz Selimani, I'll show you his uh, details real soon. Uh, but I've got Alex Anderson. Now, of course, the Austrian Bundesliga is back. And uh, with that, I would like to hope that Alex Anderson is going to be playing again um, in terms of his SO5 scores recently. Uh, he hasn't played since the middle of December. But of course, that's because the Austrian Bundesliga has been off he was a regular first team player i anticipate he'll come back and continue to be regular his floor price is 320 right now uh, and i purchased him for 480 so i did buy him in hype which might have been bad on my part but we'll have to see and then faiz selimani is going to be my last player so i just want to show you guys why i why i settled on him and i actually don't think i settled on him i actually think i got a really good deal with him so he's been away at afcon um, where he didn't play against Gabon, he didn't play against Cameroon, and he didn't play against Sporting Charleroi. Uh, he did get some game time against Morocco. He did get some game time against Ghana. Prior to AFCON, his SO, his like SO5 scores are insane. Very rarely does he have yellow dots. Very rarely does he have your you know your your green dots here. Quite regularly, he has the the deep green and then the very dark green as well. He's come back and he's not quite hit the dizzy heights yet. However, of course, with the fact that now Reynolds is at Cortic as well, their club has gone up a notch. Their team has gone up a notch. And of the three games that he's played in since he's been back, 
Club Rouge and Antwerp are two of the best teams in the league. So I, I kind of looked at his last 40, which is a 64, 84th forward over the last 15 games, which is real nice. And I looked at his, like, uh, his prices, and we can show you his price graph here. And you'll see that's the one that I bought, £1,155 I paid for him. Um, he sold very regularly for more than that, but not by much. But he just looks like he is going to be a super, super purchase for me at a very good price. He's 28, so lots of years of utility. And if he continues this run of good form, and this isn't just like a lucky run of form, this isn't like an L5 or L15 situation. This is the last 40 games. That's well over one season. He's been performing well. I'm pretty confident he's going to be good for me, especially the fact that Korchik now have got uh, Brian Reynolds. So I've got the, the duo there. So that's my first lineup there, guys. And so I basically bought Philip Cohn as well. I was looking at lots of different goalkeepers um, that I could have bought for... Oh, where is he? There we go. Could have bought for um, this area, I suppose. Philip Cohn, as you'll see here, I bought for £1,868. Now, the floor price is £2,600, but that doesn't mean, any, may, mean anything. There's just not a lot listed up. But again, I bought him... Based on the fact, again, that within the last month, his rare card has been traded, what, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 times, right? So it's not like I'm the only person that's bought him and he's not being traded at high price. He's being traded regularly around 17 or 1800 pounds. Um, and he is Red Bull Salzburg's under, like, goalkeeper right now. And as people in my chat explained to me, so he, he plays regularly and he gets some good scores. He has a few, like, mid to lower range games as well. But in general, he does well. Um, and quite regularly, they sell off their bigger players to like either, you know, Red Bull Leipzig or into the Bundesliga rather than the Austrian Bundesliga. So as a young goalkeeper, I will get 10, 12, uh, who knows where so rare goes, right? I'm, you know, looking way too deep into the future, but I'll get 10 or 12 years of utility out of him, which I think is very, very reasonable, especially if I can start yielding returns from Challenger Europe with this team. What I like the absolute most about this team and about the purchase that I made with Cone specifically and Reynolds at this point is that they are also under 23 eligible, specifically uh, Reynolds for a few years, Cone for the rest of this year. So that is my lineup. And that then is why I've gone and spent just over £3,000 on the two new acquisitions. Uh, it might even be a bit more than £3,000, but um, that's why I've basically gone and spent that money. Now, what I was thinking of doing, however... And I haven't decided who I want to pick as the player because I, I need to go and spend some more money. And the reason why is because I didn't look at the mixed team, right? Now, the mixed team is three players playing in the Austrian Bundesliga, unique, super rare, and rare. So you need a rare to enter. I thought, okay, let me look at who I've got. I've got um, Kohn in the Austrian Bundesliga. I can use... Mittelstadt or somebody else if uh, you know I can use Bammer if if I'm going to be taking these players I can use Alexanderson he's from the Austrian Bundesliga and then I can also use Salamani right I just need for me to be able to submit a team into this division all I need is another player from the Austrian Bundesliga that's rare and I've looked at a few players I haven't decided if I want to purchase them or not yet um and the reason why I'm tempted to go into the weekly mix is because right now there's only 160 managers in there. Now, there might be more by the time the game week goes live. We've still got two days to go, right? But the prize pool here is 86 rewards. At this moment in time, I only have to beat 50% of the managers in there to get a reward. And it's okay, it's only a tier three rare. And I believe the tier three rares aren't the. Um, I mean, yeah, they're not like the top tier threes. They're not like. Uh, I mean, there's some good players here, actually. I mean, Bammer is there as well as under 23s in there and everything. Um, but obviously, if I finish in the top 53, well, I'm not saying I'm going to, but, we, you know, we're going to do some watch alongs for this. But if I did, I could earn my myself my first super rare, which would be insane to get a tier one super rare. Imagine Pepe from Porto as a super rare, as a reward. There's only one on the market. I don't even know how much he sells for. I, I, I guess I like the idea, I think even further still, I love the idea of having the opportunity of winning a rare or a super rare based on this division, given the fact that if I was playing in 
um, Challenger Europe, right? Where there's already 1,500 managers that have entered. The prize pool in Challenger Europe is only 275. That is obviously, I you know, the top sort of, uh, what, 12, 15% rather than the top um, top 50%. So I, I kind of fancy my chances. And then, of course, here... You can, I mean, you can get some Ethereum if you finish on the podium where you can't before because of the super rare. But I need to finish in a top 105 just to get a tier two or a tier one rare. And so I just, I just fancy my chances a little bit more in the weekly mix. But it does mean that I have to spend on a player that might end up just being a useless dud. And if I don't win, I would have effectively bought a player that was irrelevant for my reward system and probably take a loss on him. So I don't know um any anyway anyway let's carry on looking at the teams that i've uh i've put together so we've got the champion europe team now took a little bit of humming and ahhing about who to put in the uh champion europe team so we've gone for deturo um deturo has got cadiz so i'd like to hope that celta vigo can keep a clean sheet against cadiz which is why he's in there i've gone for bellerin bellerin have got levante now if we look at the table um levante are currently not doing so good uh they are bottom of the table with one win um and of course betis are doing very good they are third in the table right now uh real madrid and sevilla ahead of them i just i don't like bellerin like scares me at the moment because i played him before and he did well then out of nowhere for one or two games he just decided to sit out and that was a bit confusing to me. I don't know why he would. But then he came back and played against Villarreal and had an absolutely insane game. So I don't know if he's going to be playing or not. But he's he's playing very well. So I'm I'm putting him in. And feel free to let me know in the comments if it's a smart choice or not. We've got Jose Geyer in there. Now, I could have gone for Mittelstadt because Hertha have got Firth. And Firth are, of course, bottom of the table. Uh, the reason why I've gone for Jose Geyer is because Valencia are playing against Deportivo Alaves. And of course, Deportivo Alaves are also low on the table. They're 19th. So three of my players in here, we have got Turo against 18th, Bellerin against 20th, and Jose Gaia against 19th. So I've basically got the bottom three clubs for my defender, two defenders and goalkeeper, which I would like to hope would give me three clean sheets. And because I've got fullbacks rather than centre-backs, potentially assists and goals as well. Um, Jose Guy is definitely an interesting one because I do like him a lot. And uh, he played in the game against Real Sociedad, played very well. And if we look at his uh, stats there, he got 54 points against Real Sociedad. Obviously, he couldn't play here because he got sent off, but he's back from that now. And then we've got Parejo. Parejo is an interesting one because uh, Villarreal have got Real Madrid. Obviously, Real Madrid, top of the table, doing very well right now. But Parejo always scores well. And then Shiro Immobile. Um, Lazio have got Bologna. And so the, uh, the Bologna are not doing so great in the table. Let's have a look. Bologna are currently 13th in the table, whereas Lazio are 6th. Um, it's not a huge points difference. It's 11 points after 24 games. But I would like to hope that Shiro Immobile could bang some goals against Bologna. And that's my five for champion Europe. We've then got the under 23 set up. And I actually had some options here. And I've still got one... I don't want to say risk, but I've got four players I'm super happy with. We've got Muric in goal. Again, brilliant. We've got Saliba, who is just always great and is against Mets anyway. So that's very good. we got Windal, who plays exceptionally well. And AZ are against Go Ahead Eagles. And unless, uh, unless my brain is serving me incorrectly, I think Go Ahead Eagles are low in the table, aren't they? Yeah, they're 13th in the table. They're only six points clear of relegation at this moment in time. Um, and obviously AZ, Alkmaar are way up in the table at fifth. So I'm hoping Windau plays well. Jonathan David has Montpellier. Uh, now, Jonathan David has got, you know, obviously one of the reasons why we bought um, Hatate was just in case Jonathan David doesn't perform or has a tough game or whatever. But Montpellier, much like many of the teams we're playing against right now, I mean, they're not doing bad. They're seventh in the table at the moment. And Lille are down in 11th. So actually Montpellier are a better team. But... Uh, my other options are either Che Nunnally, um, who I, I just don't have faith in, if I'm being perfectly honest with with you, or nobody else. So Jonathan David was an easy pick, but Sadilek, this is the interesting one. So we've got Sadilek. Now, Santiago Simon is back. 
uh, the the Argentinian league is back. But I have a viewer who's Argentinian, and he said basically River Plate have made a lot of acquisitions this summer, including Barco, who I have a limited version of, um, that played very well in the MLS last season. Um, so I don't know if he's going to actually get game time or come off of the bench. Sadilek is a good performer and a really good scorer, but much like Parejo, they're playing against Ajax. So what are the chances he he's a high scorer? I don't know. And unfortunately, Zaniolo is suspended um, in this upcoming game. Otherwise, I would be picking Zaniolo 100%. But that is my under-23s for this upcoming game week. And then last but not least, we've got the All-Stars. Normally, my All-Stars is what I've got left. This time, I've actually feel like I've picked a really strong All-Stars squad. Now, Moreno's got um, Hoffenheim. And Moreno's just a consistent scorer, a good scorer for me anyway. Luis Felipe have got Bologna, so hopefully a clean sheet for him would be nice. Obviously, the 250-point threshold is what we're looking for first and foremost. Said Kalasinac just started playing for Marseille, um, and they're playing against Mets, and uh, Mets are currently 18th in the league. Uh, Marseille, obviously, second in the league. So I am hoping for a big performance from Kalasinac. Um, I'm really excited for the prospect of him continually playing because, as we know from his Schalke days... When he's playing in a five-back or as a wing-back, and when he's in a team that allows him to attack and has players that can score goals, unlike what we did with him at Arsenal, he gets goals and assists like you've never seen. He gets involved so deeply that as a fullback, like I can imagine him scoring massive points for Marseille as, as the years go on. And he's young enough to have a good amount of utility in him as well. Uh, we then got... Two, two kind of tricky ones here because we've got um, Brozovic, but obviously Inter are playing against Napoli. And uh, just because they're playing against a good team, it doesn't automatically mean low score, of course. Um, but it's, you know, you always kind of uh, look to the favourable games, don't you? Um, and right now, this is first in the table against second in the table, Inter against Napoli. Inter are top, Napoli second, and Inter have a game in hand. But it's a tough, tough tough game for Brozovic in there and maybe he'll shine hopefully he does and similarly for Morata Juve have got Atalanta Juve currently fourth Atalanta currently fifth um what's interesting is obviously Juve have just picked up um not not just Vlahovic but uh Zakaria and so that's two big acquisitions for them and the way that they were playing in the last game who did they play against I can't remember who it was uh they played against Hellas Verona okay Telus Verona, but still, it, it was insane to see how well Morata was playing basically on that left wing. You know, Vlahovic was up front, Dybala was playing off of him, and it looked like Morata was left wing. But I, I, the way they lined up was officially Morata and Vlahovic together. It, what is interesting, however, is I know they do rotate a fair bit, and Moyes Keen is there. Um, so I don't know. It's it's going to be interesting. Chiesa's injured for the rest of the season. Bernadeschi's injured. They don't really have any other forwards apart from Moise Keane. But it wouldn't surprise me if Moise Keane started because he seems to get rotated in and out a lot. But that is my um, All-Stars 5. And I, overall, I'm just really, really happy. Really happy with the uh, the setup that we've got. Um, Geronimo Rodriguez. Um, because... I, I, f I feel like there is potential this week to earn rewards genuinely in every single division. I'd love to hit at least one reward, but if I could get two or three, maybe even four rewards plus Ethereum, I'd be delighted. Maybe I'm being way too out of out of the you know out of the zone and just thinking way too confidently in my players. Obviously, you have to, otherwise I wouldn't have them in there. But that is my setup, guys, and they are the new two acquisitions for me. Um, so interested to hear your thoughts and feedback on the lineups down below. Thank you guys as always for watching. Uh, before we get out of here, one thing that I do want to do, because I want to monitor it uh, going forwards. So you can see my gallery right now is worth 17.71 Ethereum. As of right now today, the 9th of February at 538, which is 40,000 pounds to 40,289 pounds. However, as you can see here as well, I also have 5.2 Ethereum in my wallet. So... At this moment in time, we're at like basically 23 Ethereum bang on the nose um, valuation. So I want to hopefully yield that. And in another two to four weeks, I want that to be worth 24 or 25 Ethereum and start snowballing it from there. 
but only time will tell if my uh, choices have been successful or not. But that is going to be the end of the video, guys. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. I'm out. Peace.